Do you have remorse for what happened, especially from the perspective of the employees and the staff? Yeah. I mean, hurting them was sort of the last thing that I would ever have wanted to do. And in part, I mean, there was financial harm, um, but I don't, I don't know whether it's more important or not, but, you know, it was taking a place that was very much like a family to them. Um, and it was as if I destroyed it. And so I think that because we were so much like a family, it was almost as if like mom went off the deep end and got together with some cuckoo abusive guy and, and sort of abandoned them. And they didn't know what was going on and what was happening. And So do you regret lying to them? I regret lying to anybody in all of those circumstances, but... I wasn't lying. You know, he made me think that, you know, everything was going to be reversed and okay. And anybody that money was borrowed from, they would get it back, you know, maybe tenfold. And so it was this weird situation of having like one foot in his reality and potentially believing the things he was saying, or even over time, wanting to believe them more and more because the alternative was so, um, the alternative was worse. The alternative was like, was increasingly a bigger and bigger nightmare. So, so there's this whole situation where you're constantly giving him money, you're constantly borrowing, borrowing money with this idea that it'll be repaid like a hundred X fold. Right. <laughs> kind of like, yeah. So it's sort of like lying to somebody because you're planning their surprise party. You think like, well, I'm lying to somebody, but I'm, but it's because there's a good reason. Yeah. So, you know, it's sort of, that's not a good example, but. No, but you could have not made it a surprise party and be like, pull them in onto the planning of the party and be honest about like everything that's happening, not in a negative way, but like get them in on the, the fact that, okay, I just need to, give money to this guy, but we'll get, he is a super rich person of some kind and he'll um, repay. I mean, I wish I, well. Because you're holding on to this. the entire time, I mean, that, that's part of the torture is that you're isolated and unable, unable to tell anybody. But you're not unable, or he was telling you, you're not allowed to say anything to anybody. I mean, you're choosing not to say anything but it's because of the sort of the weight of it because it's embarrassing to sort of is it embarrassing is something i mean what why do you not tell others you know um, like what what is that what's what what's happening to the mind where you don't tell others i don't know you're part of why the story is that, you know everything that happened is hard to summarize and talk about in any concise way is that so much of it happens in this very slow, slow, step by slow step. way. And, um, you know, people always use the whole like frog and boiling water example. Um, so that by the time you realize you're fucked, it's too late. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it seems hard to believe or understand to other people because they see where you are or where you ended up and they think, well, how did you let that happen? And well, I don't know. I, yeah. I, would I have willingly like destroyed my life and hurt all the people I care about and, you know, allowed my mother to get hurt? And I wouldn't have ever, ever willingly done that. So something else must have happened. And that's, um, that's the part that's difficult to understand.